I started playing singing bowls um, when I was about 20, um, and they really taught me how to meditate. And also that it that there are different ways to be in the world. You know, playing these bowls for 10 or 15 minutes, um, you're really in a different state of consciousness, really in a different state of mind. So I distinctly remember feeling the power of sound and the power of these bowls and their ability to expand consciousness beyond the way we usually perceive it. Meditation work was a way for me to get bigger. I think this is this practice of sound with these bowls and these gongs. In a way, it's one of the most central aspects of my practice because it's the most direct experience of vastness, of void. And so I feel it's really important to connect with that as frequently as possible. mystic is someone who has an intuitive sense of numerical oneness with the universe. That they have a sense that this perception of being separate from other things is not the truth. That's not, um, that's not our true state. And a mystic will then use themselves as an experimental space to enhance uh, their experience of that intuition of that oneness. Mix Oops is um, my research in expanding my capacity. Um, for example, I'm interested in breaking, I'm also interested in Vogue and dancing in high heels. What happens if I break dance in high heels? I originally came to breaking as a way to explore masculinity, explore power, and then more recently I've been learning Vogue and that has, moving in that way, um, has opened other things in my body and it's been confronting in other ways as I own my own femininity. So, so Mix Oops is an opportunity for me to push on all the walls of who I think I am with the hope that by then presenting that in artistic spaces, then other people could say, wow, if they could do that and that and that and that, and maybe like I can do this and this and this and that, right? Just to, just to open, the, open the space for who we could be. Because I think a lot of suffering comes out of us having too limited ideas of what's possible for our, us to express. <laughs> What I'm really fascinated by is, or what I'm inspired by is the power of transformation of, of clothing and garments and fashion, specifically kind of nightlife, queer fashion, um, and how that serves as a way to live into some other more fabulous version of yourself than maybe you get to live into in the daytime. Where it really started was um, looking at the materials of chain and feathers. Um, and it was kind of an obvious place to look at bondage and liberation, because this was coming up as an aspect of the meditation practice, um, realizing that the same mind that, that keeps us in bondage is the same mind that can set us free. And then uh, the synthetic plants, fake uh, the plastic and also silk flowers, they came as a, as a later addition and I was just so excited when I realized that that was a new material I was getting to work with because that bondage and liberation, that whole conversation, nature holds that. Nature is always holding the conversation. So there's a way that um, whatever I bring to the table, I'm break dancing and rapping in high heels and I'm voguing, all of the things that I can bring to the table, no matter what it is, it's held in nature. Nature can always hold everything.
I've always been uh, kind of suspicious of hyper-specialization, that actually I can be all of the things that I want to be. I can rap and also dance and also make costumes. And yeah, I'll do my own website and teach yoga and meditation. And so I'm trying to do that with my work as well. What, what does it mean to not uh, limit ourselves and play by certain rules that we can actually create uh, opportunities for ourselves to be versions of ourselves that maybe the world didn't even know was possible.